Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomerle, Stuck Mountain Weather and Ski Conditions. And first off, as promised, snow in Whistler Black Cone coming down right now. It'll snow most of the day. They're reporting five inches over the last 24 hours, but they're going to add to that. In fact, in some cases significantly up there in the Pacific Northwest. Now on the other side of the coin, we're waiting on that storm further south into the lower 48 in uh, Colorado. This is Loveland, beautiful day. The lift heading up to the Continental Divide. Oh man, just spectacular view. We will get some of that snow Monday afternoon, Monday night into Tuesday morning in Colorado. Uh, but I think overall the message here is that after this storm moves through, it's probably going to mark an inflection point on the ski season for the lower 48. And I think we're really going to kick spring skiing into high gear after this storm moves through. It's going to be quite different after this, as I'll show you in the forecast. So let's jump into the radar and the satellite. You can see there's not a lot happening with a giant dome of high pressure basically over the southwest part of the west. So there's just it's just warm. Uh, we're really waiting on this storm, which is up here in the Pacific Northwest. You can see the precip being slammed into the, the train features up there. Pacific Northwest diving down into Baker and Stevens Pass and Rainier. It's snowing up towards uh, the Banff area and the interior uh, ranges up there. So this will be good snow for a lot of those places. Now, here's the thing. The jet stream will help bring this storm to the south. You can see the dip right here. Let me see if I can't mark it. So there's your low generally right there on Tuesday. So that will snow over parts of the Tetons, then eventually into Colorado. But this is pretty fast moving, so the amounts will be limited, and it's only going to brush the Wasatch. I don't really see much more than maybe 1 to 3, 1 to 4 over the heart of the Wasatch. It's moving too quick. You don't have a brushing motion. Now, after this storm moves through, like I said, this will probably mark a very significant turning point in the ski season. Look at the pattern. Basically, we're going to see a ridge. The jet stream gets hung up and starts to track up towards the north. So a lot of the weather will get pushed up into Canada after this. And the lower 48, uh, we're going to settle into what's going to be a rather warm, dry pattern after the storm moves through. Um, so spring skiing will definitely be kicked into high gear um, across the, uh, the lower 40, especially in the interior and the southwest part of the country. So here's the future radar and the future satellite. All that precip and that blue, which is snow, will then move down towards Sun Valley, Big Sky, western and southwest Montana. That's Monday at 5 a.m. By the time we get into Monday afternoon, Monday night, and Tuesday morning, it's moving so fast, it will already blow through the Tetons and brush the Wasatch, and then it's already into Colorado. It's already moving through Colorado by Tuesday morning. In fact, there will be some snow in the morning, but really what happens is the whole thing just moves away very quickly. And into southern Colorado and out um, there, look at that. It basically dries up by Wednesday morning. And then look at the west. By the time we get to Wednesday morning, I mean, you're talking about a very large dome of high pressure beginning to build in. I'm going to see if I can't mark that across the west. And again, temperatures will be going up. The jet stream will have most of the weather locked into Canada at this point, and it's going to be a whole different weather pattern by then. So if we take a look at the uh, snow accumulations, uh, the numbers are going to move fast. Uh, you know, this, this front is moving quickly, but look at the numbers up in the Pacific Northwest, initially here in British Columbia, Whistler, over towards Sunshine Village and uh, Marmot Basin by tomorrow morning. They're significant in some cases. Tomorrow the skiing will be great up there. Um, and you can see it anywhere from 6 to 12 on the way for the Banff area and potentially 1 to 2 feet up there in the Pacific Northwest and B.C. Then the whole thing races down. So between Monday morning and Tuesday morning, we'll probably end up with about 5, 6 inches in Jackson Hole and Grand Targhee by Tuesday morning. And uh, 4 or 5 there, Bridger Bowl and Big Sky Discovery. And even Colorado by Tuesday morning, looking at two to six inches there, but only one to three for the Wasatch. Now, by the time we go from Tuesday into Wednesday, the accumulation continues to sink further to the south into Colorado, and we'll add some accumulation down through Monarch and Wolf Creek. Well, maybe not even Wolf Creek, depending on the exact movement of the front, but potentially we'll add another inch or so through parts of Loveland and Arapahoe Basin. But that's probably where you'd want to ski on Wednesday morning, somewhere in Colorado, because after this, again, things really start to dry out across the lower 48. All right, thank you for tuning in here. Really appreciate it, and hope you have a good rest of the weekend.